Hey, what is up everybody? Zero Fats here coming at you on behalf of AdventuresOnTheRiver.com as well as Life and Times Zero Fats, okay? Life and Times Zero Fats dot AdventuresOnTheRiver.com That's the, that's the uh, website of my, uh, my personal blog where I uh, also give out cool information to people and uh, well today I want to talk to you guys about uh, value the value of items perceived value and actual value uh, this is like super important man because here we are the day after Christmas right now and um, you see signs everywhere 50% off all Christmas stuff everywhere here we are the day after Christmas 50% off of all Christmas stuff now the last job I ever had was at a department store okay I, I fixed their their computers and their systems and stuff but when I worked there it it never failed to amaze me how um, that like things would be like 1999 one day and then the day after that holiday instantly they'd cut back to like 50 percent off one minute it's worth like twenty dollars then the very next day it's worth ten dollars right nothing changed it was the exact same product completely brand new nothing changed between yesterday nothing changed in that 24 hour period uh... except the day you know but like the perceived value of that stuff has been reduced dramatically there's no actual reality to that there's no actual reality I mean the truth of the matter is that stuff has the same value that it had before but the perceived value is it doesn't matter anymore because Christmas is over so people don't care about it that's the perceived value never mind that we're gonna have another Christmas and you know nine or ten months it's amazing but it's complete perceived value um, Another example of this, uh, uh, when you th think about how that translates to like information products, something like, um, you know, like something like AdventuresOnTheRiver.com, you know, a membership site, you know, it has it has a certain perceived value, right? There's only one AdventuresOnTheRiver.com, so I kind of set that perceived value. I set it at um, what I feel like the content's worth, and then I try to make sure the content is worth more than what what I'm actually charging. So, you know, AdventuresOnTheRiver.com is $14.97 a month. Um, that's the perceived value that I set for it. There's no other Adventures on the River out there, so I have to decide what that perceived value is going to be. I try to set I set it at $14.97, and then what I try to do is make sure I provide more than $14.97 worth of content every month. So every month I gotta make sure what I'm giving you is worthy of your $14.97. And I'm very, very conscious of that. Every month I, I make sure that, you know, I'm giving you enough stuff to equal that much money every month. So that, that's kind of a perceived value for that. Um, but here's where it gets funny, right? Like if you sold a special report or like a, an ebook on ClickBank, right? You can charge like five dollars for the ebook and that is gonna be like a dirt cheap price now you move locations and you go over to Amazon now that same exact ebook that you were charging five dollars for and it was bottom of the barrel and nobody had problems buying that for five dollars you can take over to Amazon and sell it as an ebook form and like at four ninety nine you're not gonna get nearly as many people buying it because like the value of an ebook on Amazon is lower. It's the same product. Nothing's changed. It's the same exact product. The only thing that's changed is the like the idea of how much it should be worth. Um, now, why is it important for you to understand stuff like this? Um, it's important because you know you stand to make a lot of money if you understand perceived value and actual value. If you understand that your product um, will do better like on JVZoo or it will do better on Clickbank um, than it will on Amazon uh, because you can charge more for it and there's a market for it in those forums then you will do better okay if you have a book about you know if you have a book about you know recipes or something yeah you might do better on Amazon you know there's more people that define your product but if you have a, a, a tight niched product if you have a tight niched ebook um, you know, you might do better on one of these other places, you know, nine times out of ten, you could do better on one of these other places. With some of these other forums and stuff, you know, 
you, you really it really pays to do a little bit of research on your market and uh and it pays to make some friends too i mean it pays to make some friends you want to try to get some people behind you uh you want to try to find some kind of what they call joint venture partners and i don't want to say that like and intimidate people if you don't know what that means what it basically means is you find other people who are selling similar products to you or you find other people who are promoting other products similar to yours and you try to get them help you promote your product <laughs> and in return you're going to pay them you're going to pay them part of the uh, commission on the sales right or all of it sometimes um, but that's that's kind of like a really really fast way to build leverage for yourself and it's a really really fast way to become successful but you can't do stuff like that on Amazon not quite as easily um, what's another example of this what I'm talking about besides information product this book right here, I picked this up the other day at a thrift store. You know, um, this is The Domino Man by Jonathan Barnes, okay? Now I picked this up because uh, it's, frankly, it looks brand new. Found it at a thrift store, I paid about 10 cents for it, okay? Very cool, the price is right and it looks brand new. Now when I get online, and you know what, I'll do a screen capture after I get off here, I'll do a little video capture so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But when I get online, I see that I see that this is going for about a penny. If I use the scanner for something like this, I would uh, I would think like this book's not worth my time. It's not worth nothing, nothing. And you go through and you scan nothing, 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 nothing. But because I have that experience, because I have that knowledge that hey, this book is brand new looking. Now I'm sure that the the odds are in my favor because it's not just because it's brand new looking, but if I look in here. My dust jacket is in awesome condition. The book is brand new. But there's one more thing, okay? If you look in here, now you might or might not be able to see this, but if you look in here, you'll see first edition in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. You'll say first edition, and then down here you'll see a one in this row of numbers. Now that one in that row of numbers is a sign that this is the first edition. Now this one actually says first edition, okay? So that makes it a noted first edition. Okay, so what does that make this book? That makes this a collectible. Uh, that instantly takes it outside of the game of the scanner saying it's worth a penny. Instantly it's something different now. Those are the nuances of selling books on Amazon, okay? A scanner can't teach you that, okay? These are things you have to learn by kind of like practicing your craft, all right? Now, it, it matters because that's perceived value. This does not have the same perceived value as a normal copy of this book. It's a collectible, okay? It's in like new condition and it's a first edition, okay? Let me tell you something else about perceived value. This book, if you look, it happens to have a little dot on the on the on the uh, the bottom edge there, okay? And that little dot, if you don't know what you're thinking about, if you don't know what you're looking at, you might not know what the heck that is. You you might you might be like, I don't know, what stupid little dot. What what's the big deal? I can put it in my description. It's a stupid little dot. No, it's it's something called a remainder mark, okay? And and, and that that little dot is basically saying that this book was in a bookstore. And they couldn't sell sell it, so they put those little dots on there. And it doesn't always have to be a little dot. It could be like a little line. It could be like a stamp. It could be a lot of different things. But it basically signifies that the bookstore couldn't sell it. They ended up selling it in bulk to another place, usually like a wholesaler or something. Okay, and eventually it might end up at a thrift store like this one did. Um, but that's called a remainder mark. So this book is what's known as a remainder. Okay. Now, the, I, the fact that this book has a little black dot on there, like, it lowers its value. It lowers the perceived value of this book. It doesn't make this book really in any worse condition. I mean, this is a brand new book. It's a collectible first edition. But because it has that dot, now it has this stigma. The stigma is it's a remainder. It's a remainder book. Somehow that makes it not as valuable. Makes it not as valuable somehow. The end of the story with this book is, even as a remainder, it's still a collectible first edition. 
These are things you'll put in your description, right? Is it going to sell as fast as the ones going for a penny? No, it's not going to sell as fast because um, it's a different market. You have shrinked your market. There's a ton of people out there looking for this book, okay? But there's only so many people out there looking for this book as a first edition, okay? Those people want the first edition because they're fans of this author. They're fans of... They're fans of this series, and they like the series so much, they want the first edition of the series because it means something to them, okay? The perceived value is higher, okay? Now, the people who want this, okay, they're not going to care about paying more money for it because in their eyes, the book is worth that much money, right? It's worth that much to them. Now, that remainder mark, what that means is some of those pickier collectors aren't going to want this book. But if we shrink our market down a even a little bit more, we're going to find a group out there, a, pe a group of people out there who don't mind that there's a little black Sharpie marker dot on the bottom of this book and they still want the collectible first edition because it's nicer. It's nicer, right? And those are the people that are your target market with a book like this. Now, when you understand crap like this, like what I'm talking about, when you understand crap like this, and it could be anything, you guys, it doesn't have to be books. It could be coffee mugs. It could be paintings. It could be compact discs. It could be DVDs. It could be guitars. It could be guitar amplifiers. It could be anything. Every category has its nuances, okay? And that's why I say, just master one, man. Master one and then move on to the next. Because I guarantee you, you could be making a full-time living off of just one of these categories. I know because I've lived it. I made a full-time income just selling books. That's it. And I could still be doing that right now if I wanted to. But I understand books, okay? Now, if you, uh, I propose to you, learn one thing, okay? Then once you've mastered it and you want to try something else, you know, move on to the next thing. But the point about it is, each category is powerful if you understand the category. Like this book category has tons of nuances. But I don't care how you're successful, whether it's scanning stuff at department stores or whether it's just picking without a scanner, your knowledge of perceived value versus real value is priceless. If you can start understanding why people think something's more valuable this way, versus why it's less valuable this way that's going to serve you very very well okay guys so cool let's look up domino men here by jonathan barnes um what we're going to do is we're going to go to amazon because this is a newer book we got a nice uh isbn number on the back and we're just going to enter that isbn number nine seven eight zero zero six one six seven one four zero one okay and there's our domino man and so we can see it's going for a penny like and like I said to you guys at first glance you think well this book's not worth anything you know if we scan this out of the bookstore we wouldn't think it was worth anything but let's look a little bit a little bit closer all right so let's uh let's first look at the idea um, that it is a collectible Okay, we know it's a first edition, so we don't even have to worry about all the stuff. We're not competing with these people. I don't care if it says first edition in here or not. We're not competing with these people. That's very important to remember. Let's go to collectible. We can see everyone who has a collectible copy, they're listing first edition, dust jacket, very good. Now we know our dust jacket is in like new condition. Okay, so that's fine we're here on the collectibles let's see what the first like new we know the first like new one is going for five ninety nine plus three ninety nine shipping and handling well here's the thing we are selling ours through amazon fba so let's go ahead and check free shipping oh look nobody's selling this through fba now that is an advantage for you because now you could have the first collectible copy of this book that's being th sold through Amazon FBA. Now, folks, if someone wants a first edition of this book and they want the collectible version of it, they will take yours through FBA before they will take any of these people's. I don't know why that it's like that, but it absolutely is like that. Okay. 
So we can see here um, the, the the lowest like new is 599 plus 399 shipping and handling. So what I, I generally do at the very least, I'll raise it by five bucks. So you're looking at you're looking at 1099 is what you're looking at for a value on this book. Um, because there are no other FBA sellers on this book, you could probably just say 12 bucks if you wanted to, you know. And, and what what you could do is you could go over here to the used ones and just see if there's any. And we know there's a fulfillment with Amazon right there. Okay, you look at the free. That's in good condition. Very good. Any like new conditions going through FBA? None. No like new condition copies of this book are being sold through FBA. Okay, so that gives you another advantage. All right. So what it boils down to is, you could basically sell this through your FBA, uh, through your FBA for probably about twelve bucks. Twelve bucks on this book. Now what you need to do is. Um, you see these descriptions. You see these descriptions right here. Number one, you, you can do a better job than this. Uh, first edition, dust jacket in very good condition. First edition, no smoke. You know, um, you can do a little bit better job on your description than this, and that's going to um, help sell your book. Uh, in your description, you want to make sure you mention that small sharpie mark on the bottom for it, on the bottom edge. We took a book that was going for a penny. Um, and we we bumped it up to like 12 bucks all right that's pretty good um, I'm just looking to see if there's any um, any uh, 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 um, I just want to see what the first like new condition copy is going for um, there's a like new right there 95 cents so we took a book that was going for 95 cents and because it was a first edition um, and because and because we're going to sell it through FBA, we took it up to twelve dollars. So that's a huge difference. All right. So that's the power of perceived value. I hope that makes sense to everybody. If you like, if you like uh, what I've been talking about with this, and this video has gone on a long time. If you like what I was talking about with the with the uh, the books and and figuring out what what the book uh, what the book's actually worth and how you can figure out what it's actually worth and not just like what it scans at. Uh, I want to do another one for you guys. Um, I'm going to do another one of these videos where I go through a book, like a screen capture of, of a book, and I'm going to do it on the Life and Times of Zero Fats. Okay, that's Life and Times of Zero Fats dot Adventures on the River dot com, and we're going to do this one. This uh, this book right here, you can see it. It's called Grinding It Out: The Making of McDonald's. Found this at the thrift store. Paid about ten cents for it. Um, we're gonna see what this is really worth now when you look on there you'll see it's not worth very much but let's see what my copy's worth so if you're more interested in this kind of stuff and you want to see me go through another book check out life and times of zero fats dot adventures on the river dot com and you can watch me go through this one grinding it out thanks for watching you guys I'll catch up with you next video peace oh and by the way if you're interested in more cool stuff about you know making money online, make sure you check out the affiliate command. That is the affiliate command.com. You can get a free module there. All you gotta do is uh, opt in and boom, you get access to a free module. And incidentally, I'm getting ready to be putting in January another course in there. Uh, just a free bonus course on product creation. So make sure you opt in over there at theaffiliatecommand.com if you're interested. So that's a lot of little things that you can do there. So uh, appreciate you guys checking out my video. I'll see you next time. Peace.